today we're going to look a little bit more at online facilitation. I mean, you've done a lot of work already with all kinds of different um, tools. Um, and so you're quite aware now, you know, how to do things in an online environment. But one of the important points that we haven't looked at is online facilitation. And in 2013, Bull noted that an online facilitator needs to be different persons, needs to have or play different roles like a cheerleader, uh, a social butterfly, a learning coach, but also a valve control. And we're going to look a little bit deeper in that. So the question is, what is facilitation? What is online facilitation? And uh, some of the tips I will give you are about facilitating learning and facilitating discussion. Okay, now when we start with the notion of online facilitation, of course we are thinking about the fact that it is still facilitation, but it's done in a different space. So in, your, in the chat room, I would like you to say what words uh, come to your mind when you think about facilitation. What does that mean? So when we do online facilitation, in fact, we should pay attention to all the core elements of face-to-face -face facilitation, and those are space, people, and process. So you have to be able to hold a safe space, foster trust and bonding among the group, manage your participants' energy, and vary the activities that you plan based on the different learning styles. So these elements are as crucial, if not more, in an online or virtual environment. One of the things that we need to look at is facilitator presence. How should you show yourself? How sh should you be visible? How should you be present? And creating that sense of presence is uh, done in a, in a different way than in a face-to-face -face classroom. So your online facilitator presence consists of discussion posts, uh, administrative instructions, um, correcting misconceptions or misperceptions, putting your online uh, your profile image or putting a photo, but also giving feedback on assignments, uh, on multimedia uh, activities, and most importantly, in online discussions. So how do you create it? You should be created, creating it from the word go, so from the beginning, and it is very important because that is when you set the tone. That is when you build that learner community. That is when you clarify the expectations for the rest of the course. So effective facilitation goes into the various tasks that you have when you are teaching in an online environment, supporting your diverse learners, building and sustaining community, managing a course, but also modeling effective facilitation, for example, in an online discussion. So what skills are needed for this? And again, I would like you to go into the chat room and write them down. We will discuss your answers soon. So the, the capacities, the capabilities, the competencies or skills required for facilitating learning online can be organized in five categories. Supporting online learning. They are also social skills communication skills, technical skills, and social networking skills. And for now, you've already looked at many of the technical skills you need, but the others still need a bit of work, I think, and, and possibly you may think the same. So you should model a positive and professional presence throughout your course, and you should plan effectively. That also includes managing your time effectively. Giving regular feedback, uh, to your learners is as important as seeking regular feedback from your learners, because as soon as you've got feedback, you can adapt, you can change. So you should use a variety of questioning techniques to extend and deepen discussions. We will get to that in a short while and also explore pedagogical approaches that um, enrich your facilitation practice. So keep on learning, as we have said, and as many other of my colleagues have said from the beginning, keep on learning, develop new technical skills, um, explore new, to new tools, and also look at new pedagogical approaches. So when and how should we use discussion forums? Okay, that's of course a good question, and that is part of what you need to decide 
How often will you be participating as a facilitator? What is your role in the discussions? When will you be absent from a discussion? Yeah, so sometimes it's better to have the students work together as peers. What is your learner's role in the discussion and how do you as the facilitator support that role? And you need to remember that you could be facilitating, but you could also ask your student to uh, facilitate and lead a discussion. So poor participation in online discussion has been identified as the biggest and the most frustrating challenge for those of us who teach online. And poor participation includes students posting no or few messages or posting questions or messages that are completely unrelated to the topic or not even appropriate for discussion or students also demonstrating superficial or surface level critical thinking or understanding. And remember, one of the things we need to do to ensure that our learners um, can fit in our societies is to develop their critical thinking and their creativity. So how can we change poor into active participation as an online facilitator? We should be asking good questions. And the question is, what are good questions? Open-ended questions are often good questions because they allow um, the learner to look for more information, to find out what his peers are saying and to develop um, his or her thinking. So, for example, a good question would be, how do you see a particular plan as adequate to the problem given and what makes you think so? Where might that plan derail? Where might it go wrong? And what other plans are possible? Can you propose plan B or C? So good questions are also questions that invite your learners to share their point of view from their personal life, from their work or professional life, and that will generate multiple perspectives. So by sharing their personal experiences and ideas, it allows the learner an opportunity to create a learning community where they can learn from each other and get new ideas. So if we ask good questions, we should allow learners to integrate their knowledge and comprehension of concepts, but also apply, analyze, synthesize and evaluate these concepts in real world scenarios. And then we go back to Bloom's uh, taxonomy, of course for those of us who know about that. And if not, please do a little Google search on Bloom's taxonomy. So how to, can we change that poor into active participation? Some more tips, share our expectations because expectations create guidelines for our learners to engage. And without clear expectations, why would students be participating in online discussions? So here on the screen, you see a number of uh, different types of expectations that can help support student participation in your online discussions. So now the only thing that remains is for me to thank you for listening to this short presentation and we can 